with Auburn of the SEC. If you like high scoring football, folks, pull up a chair. Oklahoma, led by two Heisman Trophy finalists, is averaging almost 45 points a game. Auburn, 32 points a game. Oh boy, we got excitement. Right now, we got the opening coin toss as the captains move out to the center of the field, and they will greet this officiating crew from the Big Ten. on your selection to play in the 83rd annual All-State Sugar Bowl. We're going to flip a special flip coin tonight. The coin is special in that on one side of the coin has the helmets of both teams, which will be the heads. And on the flip side of that is the All-State Sugar, Sugar Bowl logo, which will serve as the tail. Okay? Any questions? Flipping the coin will be Mr. Matt Winter. He is the president of All-State Company, as well as the uh, chief executive officer of All-State Insurance Company. Auburn, you are the visitors. Heads is the call. Mr. Winters, you be so kind. It is a heads. Auburn, you won the call. You'll receive which way do you care to kick? What? Which way do you want to kick? Why don't you turn your back that way? Auburn, turn your back this way. Auburn has won the call. And you'll receive. Our head coaches, Bob Stoops, Gus on. Well, one way to slow down that uh, Oklahoma offense <laughs> is to take the ball right away. Yeah, no doubt about it. <laughs> but you look at Oklahoma offensively, to say that they're explosive really is an understatement. They are a home run waiting to happen, and they feature the best quarterback receiver duo in the entire country, Tim, so he can take advantage of his Bolitnikoff Award winner outside. So, Kaylee Hartong, how do they handle this combo tonight? Well, Brent, Auburn's watched enough film on Oklahoma's offense to know that if D.D. Westbrook is not in his home spot lined up on the left side of the field, watch out because something is coming. So defensive coordinator Kevin Steele got creative in his game planning here. He went to his graduate assistants. He said, draw me up 12 cards. He said, be the offensive coordinator. Put Westbrook anywhere on the field. Reverses, reverse passes, gas, gas routes. Just don't put him in that number one spot to the left. He liked the plays as GAs drew up so much they actually repped him in practice. Brent, when you got a month to prepare, you might as well get creative. Thank you, Kaylee. Must be the shoes for the kicker, huh? We're underway. Taking a knee is Truett, and now just this will give us a chance to talk about the Auburn offense. They're healthy, and Sean White's the quarterback. And really, Brent, when he was healthy, he was playing at a really high level. He was the most efficient passer in the SEC. Very accurate in the short to intermediate range. Does a good job playing on time. He was able to avoid mistakes. He's an underrated athlete that can hurt you running in the zone read game and on scrambles, but you see the injury to his right shoulder. He suffered against Ole Miss late in the season. Really hampered him down the stretch, but having these four weeks off has brought him back, and he's giving this football team a ton of confidence. The big fella. Gonna block on this first down pass. Complete on the opening play of the game. And that's freshman Eli Stowe. And I think that proves the confidence of this coaching staff. Very first play, let Sean White rip it out to the right side in a quick out run. Now they come back with the diesel. Pounds to the 40-yard line. How happy are they on offense to get Cam Petway back? Remember, he hurt his quad against Vanderbilt. This is the leading rusher in the SEC, averaging 125 yards a game, and he brings a physicality to this offense. Up under center. Got the jet sweep handoff on it because, and they come right back with Stowe. Just short of the first down. So the key on that play was the quarterback moved up right underneath the center. Here is third down and manageable. And Brent, Auburn's trying to get physical. They're playing with six offensive linemen right now, trying to push Oklahoma around. Stove motions again. They come back with Petway. Easy first down. 
cruises across midfield. What a difference when number 36 is healthy and number 13. Yeah, Petway, six feet tall, 240 pounds, and is a punishing runner. He's the type of guy that gets better as the game goes on. As you're seeing, he can wear down a defense. Steps away from it, breaks two tackles, three tackles. Oh, my. I think the toughness of this Oklahoma defense is going to get tested. I think this is easily the most physical rushing attack they've seen since Ohio State. Now, that was a game they gave up 291 rushing yards. It's imperative up front. Oklahoma, they've got to be good at the point of attack. They can't get moved. They have to eat up blocks. They have to shed blocks and allow linebackers and safeties to play downhill and fill and tackle. It was offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley calls the plays on the Auburn sideline. First down and 10 on a good looking march to open the game. Prove that you can stop him. Then we'll stop handing him the ball. And Jordan Evans, they're all everything linebacker with that stop. Well, right now, Auburn showing a lot of different looks and a lot of different formations and a lot of different personnel packages. They played a lot in six offensive linemen early in this drive. Now they're back to a more conventional style. There's Rhett Lashley, their offensive coordinator, calling plays. That is when White is the best passer off play action. He hit Kyle Davis, another freshman. So it is the two freshman receivers who have made an impact early as Tony Stevens checks in for Auburn. Gus Malzahn desperately wants to finish off this opening drive. Look at this trickeration here. And Oklahoma was ready for it. You could see the ball carrier was hiding down behind the lineman. It's the old fumble Ruski uh, play, Brent. That time they had Ryan Davis at receiver kind of crouched behind the line. It didn't look like at the snap Oklahoma necessarily knew where to line up. Guys are pointing around, but a good job with the eye discipline. That play took way too long to develop. There's Jordan Evans, the leading tackler, making a big stop. Can't beat the trick plays in the bowl games. Carry on Johnson, number 21, his first carry of this game. And he is close to the 10 yard line. Good run, Parker and Evans. That's Stephen Parker. They're certainly happy to get Carry on Johnson back, too. He's basically played the entire season with a bum right ankle. Coming with tempo. Petway back in on third and two. side of the offensive line for a first down. He moved in behind Braden Smith and Robert left that time and that stop was Okorunquo. Good movement up front. You mentioned it Brent. Right tackle Robert left. Got some push on Neville right here. That's the key. Able to wash the right side of that defensive line down and that gave Petway the space increase he needed to go and convert that first down. Wildcat formation. Johnson. The carry it to that right side. Was Oklahoma offside on that play on the right side of the defense or were they uh, brought off? Let's see here. Yeah, he was. He got a jump and I thought he might have hit that neutral zone. Defense number 31. Five yard penalty. Great team first down. That's Obo Okoronkwo. He's the best pass rusher for Oklahoma. He's going to be coming up down here. Just gets a little bit too much of a jump pre-snap. So White is back, and Petway's his running back. Petway, and that time, it took four Sooner defenders but they forced him back. It was D.J. Ward at defensive end that time that fought through a double team. We saw in the last play, it was the, the end. Neville Gallimore, that got pushed out of the way. This time, D.J. Ward doing a nice job, as we talked about, being good at the point of attack, not getting moved. You're not going to make the tackle, but you're going to free up linebackers and safeties to rally to the ball. Opening drive of our game. 
Second down and five. That way is tripped up. Stephen Parker penetrated. Number 10 was able to get a hand on him and trip him up. Oklahoma's Mike Stoops, their D coordinator, trying to find creative ways to get more bodies close to the line of scrimmage and involved. They bring pressure off that left side. We've seen them bring Okoronko that time. It was the safety, Stephen Parker. Third down and five. Rolling to the left. Going to keep it very close to a first down. Wow. Sean White takes a huge shot from linebacker Jordan Evans. I give Sean White a ton of credit. He's tough. Six feet tall, 200 pounds, not the biggest quarterback in the country. Takes a lot of big shots, but watch Evans, 26, lower the boom on the quarterback. What a collision. A Sooner player is shaken up, and the training staff is tending to Jordan Evans after this hit. So he'll have to come off the field. He's getting some attention down there. And what, a, what a year he has had. For the Sooners, folks, when you look at his numbers, you people back in Oklahoma are well aware. All Big 12. I mean, 89 tackles, two and a half sacks, nine tackles for a loss, but the four interceptions. Consider that for a linebacker. He's a senior from Norman North High School. What a fine player! So decision time if you're Gus Malzahn. I think late in the season, with all the different injuries they had, without a doubt, he'd be going to his special teams. SEC player of the year and Daniel Carlson for the chip shot field goal to pay off this first drive. But you wonder what the decision process is now having Sean White healthy, having Cam Petway healthy, and it looks like Gus Malzahn's gonna go. Hunter is in at linebacker for OU. They do this quick huddle where they try to snap it quick sometimes and pitch it out wide. There's the pitch, there's touchdown. Chandler Cox, number 27, Chandler Cox. And folks, that is his first rushing touchdown of the season, I believe. Well, a nice job getting the line of scrimmage quickly. There were a ton of offensive linemen to the left side of the center. And they were basically able to outflank Oklahoma and get a great drive off the ball, get some movement. There's Chandler Cox, who normally plays that hybrid H back, fullback position normally a blocker nice run pay dirt early Daniel Carlson Tyler Stovall is the holder on the first drive of the game Auburn of the SEC scores on Oklahoma of the Big 12 but it will be high fly Oklahoma's turn when you come back to New Orleans <laughs> I, had to, I had to shake your hand. Congratulations. Fresh leg, baby. Fresh leg. Feel good? Come on. Is it, baby? Go, Cozan. Come on, Braden. Go, damp here. There we go. Dressed out. How about that, baby? Let's go 99. And that was our AT&T Inside Access Mr. Enthusiasm, Gus Malzahn, head coach of Auburn. Incidentally, that was the field judge, Terry Anderson. This is his last game, has 26 years in as a Big Ten official. Malzahn and the Tigers strike first. Ball blown off the tee from Carlson. Protocol 
and has been cleared. It looks so good in practice. Just let's look at this again. Yeah, this is Montavious Atkinson, number 48. We talk about this being a physical matchup. Lots of hitting going on here early at this year's Sugar Bowl, and that's D.D. Westbrook, who, yeah, welcome to SEC football. A better look because we'll show it to you in real time. And you can see how he was driven back. First and ten now for Baker Mayfield and the Sooners. And Samaje Pirine will open as running back. Westbrook's the motion receiver. Going to give it to him on a flare. I'm not so sure about that call after he was lit up on the kickoff return. That's Roberts making the hit on him. Regardless now, it's second down. Well, Brent, like Haley told us, this Auburn defense is very aware. If D.D. Westbrook is in motion or he's not lined up to the left side of their formation, something's up. He's getting the ball, and that time they were ready for it. Play action. Mayfield in a foot race. Throws on the run and complete to Basquin. Nick Basquin, and that's what Mayfield does so well. Throw on the run. The pressure that time coming from big Carl Lawson. Yeah, Carl Lawson basically swam inside the freshman right tackle Bobby Evans, and that flushed Mayfield outside. But you're right, Brent. Mayfield does such a good job keeping his eyes downfield. He scrambles to throw, not to run. Firing deep left side. A hand on it was Basquin and couldn't pull it in. I think that was a good throw from Baker Mayfield that time. I think Nick Basquin needed to put two hands up. You see the tempo now that Oklahoma is running at. Auburn goes fast on offense. Oklahoma is trying to speed it up too. That's a good throw. It just I think got a little bit lazy with his hands. Dimitri Flowers, who's been battling a sports hernia, trying to see what he can give the Sooners here, is the fullback. Westbrook with that great speed, but short of the first down against a speedy Auburn defense. Trey Williams there. But a good gain on that second down, which sets up third and manageable, and that's going to be key. We talked about this offense having to handle the pressure from Auburn up front. And the most dangerous player is number 55, Carl Loss, and the first team All-American. We got pressure on the quarterback on third downs. They like to move him around, they like to stand him up. Here he is right now. Playing linebacker right over the ball. There's Mayfield firing sideline, and it's terrific grab by Meade. On that saying he was out of bounds, but he was out of bounds. Yeah. Meade went up in the air and tried to high point this, but while he was in midair, he got pushed by Davis. Out of bounds, and watch where that left foot lands. It lands right on that white line. I think that was a good call by the referees. Contested Let's see if replay, see if replay takes a look at this. Yeah, it looks like Jesse were all over it. That toe was out of bounds. No question about it. Austin Siebert, who does everything. He's punting for OU. Roberts back deep. Penalty flag on the play. They're going to get a block in the back on Auburn here. I think it was number 26, Marshall Taylor. During the return. Illegal block in the back, return team, number 26. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Time out. Well, we'll take a break here from the Sugar Bowl. Auburn scored the first time they handed the ball. Can they make it two for two? We're about to find out. Well, the teams and their fans always enjoy coming to New Orleans. They look Mardi Gras style parade with floats, bands, and more. That was on New Year's Eve. There, there's a Tiger fan, huh? Well, his Tigers off to a good start. 
scoring on their first possession. And they were able to stop the Sooners. So they lead it 7 nothing here in the second possession coming up now. Jordan Evans, we should report, especially for the Oklahoma fans, your outstanding linebacker has returned. He's back on the field, number 26. So here we go for Sean White. Chandler Cox, 27, he scored their touchdown. And so Kerryon Johnson is going to open as the running back. Not much doing. Great job that time by the true freshman Caleb Kelly who's played really well for this defense here in the second half of the season getting some penetration in the backfield forcing carry on Johnson to cut it back setting up second and long. White rolling right deflected incomplete and that was Jordan Evans who got a hand on it. Lucky that wasn't picked. <laughs> you talked earlier Brent about his four interceptions on the season. His ball skills are outrageous for a linebacker. He just has a knack and an instinct for timing quarterback's throws. Now setting up third and long, and this is where Obo Okoronko, number 31, their best pass rusher right here. Very dangerous, nine sacks for Oklahoma. That ties for the most in Oklahoma history for a linebacker. Well, we've got a timeout with 6.46 remaining in our opening quarter. Now this college football season stream every game live on the ESPN app on a watch ESPN download the app or visit watch ESPN.com today. Third down and 12 coming up for Auburn with the ball just outside their own five yard line. Got a new quarterback in the game Brent John Franklin their fastest quarterback now lined up behind center. Quarterback draw play. Couple of yards. Tackle by Evans, who made the play on that pass. And Auburn forced to punt it away. Good stop by this Oklahoma defense. That'll give them some confidence. First drive of the game, Auburn marches down the field. 14 plays, 12 of them running plays. Scoring a touchdown on a fourth down. And this defense responds here in their second possession, forcing a three and out. Here we go. Number 11 is back deep. Set to give Oklahoma decent or excellent field position. Short takes an Auburn bounce. And if it bounces more than once, the return man from Oklahoma is taught to get away. And it goes out inside the 30 yard line where the Sooners will take over after that. 63 yard punt by Kevin Phillips. And so here is that prolific combination. Look at the 12 touchdown passes of 40 plus yards. Amazing. 13 different times, Brent. These two have connected on pass plays that have gone 40 or more yards. That's more than 95 teams in the FBS. Second time under Bob Stoops, he's had two players. The finals for the Heisman Trophy. Unbelievable chemistry between those two. P. Ryan again, the OU running back. Penalty fly. It's going to be a hands to the face, I think, by Montrevious Adams, the nose guard defensive tackle for Auburn, got right up in the grill. Personal foul, face man. Defense number one. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Looking that time against the right guard, Drew Samia, trying to fight a double team, and he had literally a handful of face masks. That's a good call by these referees. Look at number one on the left side, right there. You see that big right paw? I mean, that's that's an easy call for these referees to make. Westbrook is far on the outside, and he is matched against Carlton Davis. Love Auburn. Now the officials are going to reset things. They want to get the right spot at the penalty. They didn't have it. The ball should be at the 46 yard line of OU and they move it there. Single 
Safety deep and shading toward Westbrook. Mayfield throws in that direction incomplete it was the underneath man Gino Lewis who he was aiming for and Westbrook was going deep. Well Brent anybody that plays Oklahoma has a pick your poison dilemma. Do you want to load the box to stop P. Ryan and Mixon or do you want to double cover Westbrook? Right now Auburn has decided they're going to try and stop the run and they're going to leave Carlton Davis one on one against the best receiver in college football. If I'm Baker Mayfield and I'm seeing that outside, I have to make them pay for that. I have to take shots. They run P. Ryan in the middle of that defense led by Big Adams who figures to go high next spring's NFL draft makes the stop. It'll be second down and long. Or third down, let me check that. Joe Mixon checks in for the first time here in this game. He is a superb receiver coming out of the backfield. Mixon on the field for the first time tonight. Third down and nine. Mayfield looking for him. It's deflected. Incomplete and now Oklahoma forced the punt again. The outstanding true freshman Marlon Davidson, number three, doing a nice job of reading the eyes of Baker Mayfield and getting a hand up to knock that football down. Smart play for a young player knowing in the pass rush you're not gonna to, you're not gonna get to the quarterback. So you can stop your rush, try and find the football and bat that down. Roberts is back deep again for Auburn, standing at the Tigers 13-yard line. He's going to hope this one goes in the end zone, and it does. It'll come out on the 20. Seven nothing so far. The two defenses have taken charge of the Sugar Bowl. It seems like every financial company talks about investing your way to wealth. But what about protecting what you're building right now? Blunt for the athletes who demonstrate hard work on and off the field. Goodyear, official sponsor of the college football playoff. So Auburn coming out here with a first and ten. And meanwhile, out in Pasadena, tied at 49. UFC setting up to attempt a winning field goal after an interception. Quick throw by White is low and signal caught by Eli Stove, the freshman. We're seeing these young freshman receivers make plays early. They've got four really good ones that I think for years to come are going to be big time players for this Auburn offense. Good. USC 52, Penn State 49. And here, Petway. Got Evans by, again uh, on another stop and USC celebrating an unbelievable win out in the Rose Bowl. Those folks will be coming on in here now to watch the Sugar Bowl. They got to take a breath first. We, huh, we, Jess? We've had some really Whoa. good New Year's six day games hey. haven't we? Terrific. First down and ten. Three fifty. Quick pitch out to the outside. Will Hasty, Will Hasty, a great little story, Jess, that kicker right here. Yeah, he's a backup kicker last year that was kind of an onside kick specialist, but a really, really good route runner, and he's kind of found a role in this offense this year. He's made a lot of plays on third down, and there, nice seeing him get a catch here early. Second down now for the Tigers. In trouble. Throws it away. Saves a loss that time because in on top of him is Okoronkwo. Watch him split a double team. Too much speed coming off the edge right, slipping inside of the right tackle Robert left and the right guard Braden Smith. So much speed at six foot two, 245 pounds. He's been a menace early. He was basically unblockable against Oklahoma State in the de facto Big 12 title game. Third down and seven. White steps up in the pocket, incomplete. And Auburn, after an opening drive touchdown, 
forced to punt it away again. Yeah, and that time it was Okoronkwo on the coverage. We've seen tremendous pass rushing skill all season long. That time he lined up looking like he was going to rush after Sean White. Got back into coverage, did a great job. Nowhere for Sean White to go with the football. Two impressive drives back to back now for this Sooners D. So here's Kevin Phillips, the punter. Saw his mom and dad in line over at Mother's here. New Orleans restaurant that's a legendary with the folks. And he's got a good leg. Westbrook did not fair catch it. Out of bounds at the 25 yard line. A little dangerous by DD. And Roberts was there. During the kick. Holding number two on the return team. Ten yards from the end of the kick. First down. So Oklahoma with a first down and ten. Their drives have stalled out so far, Jess, when that Rose Bowl audience joins us. You give these folks a recap. <laughs> to catch them up. There's been a lot going on today. Put down inside the 10 yard line. Huh? Wow, that was. That was some Rose Bowl, folks, and welcome now to the All-State Sugar Bowl. Auburn scored that touchdown on its first drive of the game. And after that, the two defenses have been standing tall. This is Baker Mayfield, the All-Big 12 quarterback, handing off to Joe Mixon, who did not start the game. Samaj P. Ryan, he was the running back for a couple of series, and now they're going to bring in Mixon. Second down and eight. Rolling to the left. In trouble back in the end zone. He's hit in the end zone and he comes free to throw it away. Baker Mayfield saved the safety. Well, we showed you in the open the roll away by Mayfield trying to throw the backside post. To Westbrook and in coverage they did a great job taking that away it was a backside post curl and just too much pressure again Jeff Holland getting in and phenomenal scrambling by Mayfield just to get rid of that football and for those of you that were watching this game the Sugar Bowl on ESPN 2 the game will continue on ESPN so you want to make a little switch on your TV and you're watching on two. go back to ESPN now and drops it off to Mixon Speed down that sideline, and he is out of bounds. Joe Mixon is one of the most versatile running backs in the end. He can run the ball, he can catch it, he's dangerous in the return game. I think what makes him very unique, though, is his receiving skills. He could play wide receiver, line up outside, and run the entire route tree. We've seen now a couple times on third down, they're trying to get the ball to number 25, and you can see how special he is once he has the ball in his hands. First down in 10. And hand it his way again, and it'll be second down and ten. Is that good front of Auburn, it, led by Adams and Lawson? They smoked him that time. Uh, it's really important that Oklahoma is able to establish some form of running game. They need to have balance. You take a look at the Chick Fil A impact players in this game. This is probably one of the best tandems of running backs in the entire country. Mixon, Pirine, both versatile, can run and catch the ball. But this defense for Auburn, one of the best in the nation because of Adams up front at defensive tackle, the first team All-American, Carl Lawson. There's Pirine to the 46-yard line, and Adams, who has a nose man. Look at that big number one down there defensively now, will you folks? It's a, he's from uh, Georgia, and uh, he, they say he's 309. Nonsense. That was 325 at 330, Jess. Yeah, Brent. He had a chance to go to the NFL last year. Decided to come back. It was the right decision because he's taken his game to the next level. So good at the point of attack and so athletic for a guy that's 310 pounds. He was 
rewarded for his decision, named first team All SEC. Westbrook goes to the left. That's always an alert. Mayfield, quarterback draw, first down with Adams hanging off. That time, Kevin Steele, Auburn's defensive coordinator, brought pressure off the edge to the left side of the formation with Daniel Thomas in the nickel. Baker Mayfield saw it, and tremendous athleticism climbing up in the pocket, then actually dragging. I think it might have been big Montrevious Adams to get this first down. Watch this. Look at number one, get off the block. That's a 310-pound body that Baker Mayfield's dragging with him. He's only 210 pounds himself. Ball just across midfield for a first down and 10. Westbrook will motion it. They fake it to him. And they come back with Mixon to the 30-yard line. Daniel Thomas, a freshman from Montgomery, Alabama, forced to play, made the stop, but it's a 19-yard gain. And as you can see, it's coming back. Personal foul, shot block. Offense, number 78 and 58. 15 yards for the previous spot. Three-peat first down. You don't want to be chop blocked by 78, folks. That, that, that's Orlando Brown. He, he, he's about 6'9". You want to take a look at this rest. Yeah, so watch number 78 over here. He's the one kind of getting involved. Uh, there's going to be a chop on number 95. You see the high-low combination right there on Dontavious Russell. You can't be engaged with an offensive lineman and then have someone cut him out from underneath. It's a dangerous play. Good call by these referees. Knew his daddy. Passed away. Played about 10 years in the NFL. Daddy was known as Zeus. You're looking at baby Zeus out there now at 78. Not quite sure who to hit on that one, was it? That'll happen to a big offensive lineman like that. We come to the end of the first quarter. We're going to play some defense in this one. Auburn with a 7 nothing lead. And if you just joined us from watching that dramatic Rose Bowl, Auburn scored on the first series. They all swear that the young man is, is, is doing fine. Uh, like I said, Oklahoma thought he might even transfer, but he sat out the suspension, reinstated. And folks, he is a... Uh, He's just one of the best, and let's hope, given a second chance by Bob Stoops and Oklahoma, let's hope that this young man makes the most of his chance and goes on to have a career in the National Football League. There's a penalty flag. Mayfield is out to the right. Well, and certainly he's faced a lot of criticism over the last two and a half years Joe Mixon has one thing he's talked a lot about here in recent weeks though is that his teammates and his coaching staff supporting him and helping him get his focus back on the football field holding offense number 58 10 yards from the previous spot repeat second down Dr. Eric Wren who was guilty on that play yeah, Brent, right now, Oklahoma is having issues with Auburn's defensive line, both in the run game and in pass protection. The strength of this Tigers defense is up front. They are big, and they are athletic, and they are extremely deep. They roll nine different bodies up front to stay fresh. Penalty flag on the snap. Mayfield going deep, incomplete, early penalty flag. be on 95 Dontavious Russell offside defense number 55 five yard penalty still second down well Monday college football national championship game presented by AT&T rematch Clemson and Alabama 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Last year, the Tigers hung a 40 on Alabama, but the tide rolled for 45. It was a dandy. Rematch coming up. Second down and 30 for Mayfield and Oklahoma. Mixon is his running back. Mixon slips in. Davidson, very talented freshman for Auburn with the stop. You're going to hear his name a lot around the SEC. 
You know, just one of the things that's happening in this game. This, this is boring them down to big boy football. All of yeah, it really is. And I think in these second and third and long situations now, Auburn is going back to that too high safety look, trying to give help on D.D. Westbrook because they have a lot of confidence in their front four to get pressure on Baker Mayfield without having to blitz. Front is giving him trouble. Mayfield with the completion in underneath to Mixon. And there is another flag. Offside, defense number 55. Five yards from the previous spot. Repeat third down. That's Carl Lawson. Yeah, I think that time, Brent, he was just lined up in the neutral zone. It wasn't that he flinched, he just wasn't being careful. You're going to see him playing an end way outside here. It's, it's kind of a tough angle to see that. That hand is right there, right on the black line. It's a big mistake by that defense now, making this third down a little bit more manageable. We've seen now a lot on third down. Oklahoma, they've done this all year. They're throwing the ball to their running backs. So Baker Mayfield has not had time to set up. This time he rolls the pocket to the left, throws hard back to the right. Mixon, look out. First down at the 30 yard line. We told you what an outstanding receiver this young man is. And a nice wrinkle, finding another creative way to get the ball to the running back on third down. There's the rollout play by Mayfield. They run the post backside with Dede Westbrook, and Auburn's all over it. But no one covers Joe Mixon out of the backfield. Nice call by offensive coordinator Lincoln Riley. That was a quick snap that time by Oklahoma. It didn't look like Auburn was ready for it. Baker Mayfield just went really quick. Watch this. But to hand the football off to Mixon, kind of looked around, didn't hear a whistle, so he just, <laughs> just took off. Smart dude. <laughs> Heads up play by the junior quarterback. What a neat young man he is to talk to. We got a timeout here. 12.54, Oklahoma with its most serious threat of the evening, trailing the Tigers by seven. Just when you uh, convert a third and 22, that kind of keeps drive going. Yeah, I know. We can't get into this game thinking there was going to be a ton of points. It's been mostly a defensive struggle. Both teams doing a better job now on that side of the football. Key on this on this drive, though, that critical third down early. The offside by Carl Lawson helped keep that drive alive. And Baker Mayfield in this offense now, they're able to convert that third and long. They're going to want to pay this off now. And some trickeration on the part of both teams here so far. So stay tuned to see what they come up with next. I'm going to swing this with Mixon for the first down. He was upended by Deshaun Davis, number 57. And Deshaun Davis has been a good player this year for the Auburn defense. 5'11", 240 pounds. Tremendous instincts, a big hitter. Kind of reminds me, remember London Fletcher uh -huh. in the NFL? Wasn't the tallest linebacker, but extremely smart. Great football IQ, always around the ball. Deshaun Davis has been that for Auburn this year. What a block outside by Orlando Brown, showing you why he's the Big 12 Offensive Lineman of the Year. 6'8", 340, an above-average size human being. Look at the athleticism. He gets out and pummels the Auburn cornerback. Yeah, Baker told me there's a uh, penalty flag on, on this play. I mean, before I give you that little anecdote, let me say. After the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense number 78. 15 yard penalty. Still first down. That's, that's Orlando Brown. Now, so Baker said that, and the mix is a little bit shaken up, eh? He's coming off the sideline, so this ball's being rocked way back, and this this stalls this sooner drive. This ball is going to be brought back to the 20 yard line. 
But Baker said with, with Orlando Brown when he gets over there, Jess, when he's rolling, he said, I can't see anything. <laughs> don't you know, he's, a, he's a total eclipse. Yeah, no, that's the worst. I mean, when I play, and I'm he not actually, a tall you know quarterback. What he I was, said, was he's like, it's easy, but. <laughs> <laughs> We've done a good job throwing around it this year, I'd say. Good news we, for the we Sooners. Are on cable, aren't we? Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those people listening. <laughs> So P. Ryan checks in, uh, mixing, shaking up. Big play now. Lots of things happen there. It's a first down and goal. Flowers is the fullback. Reverse. Westbrook. To the 13, Deshaun Davis again. I think Lincoln Riley's doing a nice job finding creative ways to get their most explosive player outside. Dede Westbrook, the football. Let's go back to this penalty. Or we're going to watch this play we just saw. And here the reverse again. And this time they don't bring Westbrook in motion. They just leave him stationary outside to the right so it doesn't tip off the Auburn defense. Lincoln Riley doing a nice job kind of mixing up some of the looks. But no doubt about it, number 11, he needs as many touches as possible. Second and goal. Great escape ability. Looking in the end zone, moving a receiver. Touchdown, Mark Andrews. What a great job by Baker Mayfield. What he does best of all by time and waits for a receiver to clear. It was a great job buying time. And then he points his tight end, Mark Andrews, who is on the right boundary, back inside. That's a dangerous throw. You always hear about the cardinal sin throwing back across your body. But when you're as accurate as Baker Mayfield is on the run, you can get away with that. Austin Seabrook. Ties it up. Good drive, and remember, most of all, they converted a third and 22. But watch him, he looks downfield, escaping away from Adams, plenty of time in the daylight, and that's what burns defenses. That's why Baker Mayfield was a Heisman Trophy finalist. Clemson and Alabama, huh? Rematch. Tied, favored by seven. It's interesting to give you an idea of how much Clemson made an impact on the boys in the desert. About three, four weeks ago, those boys told me out there that it was going to be a double-digit number. Uh -huh. Not the way Alabama didn't move the ball, so what does Coach Saban do? He dials up another offensive coordinator. Five-yard line, and let's check in down below with Caleb. Well, Brent, yesterday, Oklahoma's offensive coordinator, Lincoln Riley, told us, you know, Baker Mayfield gets this bad rap for being all guts and no talent, when in reality, he is an elite thrower, as you saw on that last drive. Now, he says for Baker, it's all about his mentality. This is a guy who, if you look at their last two games of the regular season, West Virginia in a snowstorm, Oklahoma State in a downpour. A lot of guys would have trouble in those conditions, but because of his mentality, he said Baker Mayfield would be fine going out in a parking lot and playing ball. That competitive nature is what gets across to his team. Yeah, Kayla, he's a guy that I think always has played with a chip on his shoulder, was a walk-on at Texas Tech before transferring. People doubt him. He proves him wrong. He's got a Petway. There's a penalty fly. Petway is brought down. Hey, you know, Stephen Parker, number 10, he's been a very active Safety for defensive coordinator Mike Stoops. He's been all over the field. Well, a lot of guys lining up in the neutral zone. 31. Five yards to the previous spot. Still first down. And these are the best pass rushers on both teams. We've seen Carl Lawson do this for Auburn, and now there's Obo Okoronkwo. And that, that, that doesn't take any talent. You just got to look outside and make sure you're you're not offsides. What do you say? We just call him Obo the rest of the Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Yeah, we'll do we'll do you a favor. <laughs> <laughs> Big favorite, my friend. <laughs> you got it. First down and five. Incomplete. 
The target was Stove, and it was incomplete. Now, I'm going to go back to what some of the NFL scouts say about this quarterback, White. He's a much better thrower, believe it or not, on play action. Well, it makes sense when you think about it, what they want to do and what most quarterbacks like. When you're running the football well and you're forcing linebackers and safeties to bite and get close to the line of scrimmage, that opens up bigger windows. Auburn has to get back to having success on the ground to help out Sean White throwing. Second down and five. There's that way breaks free for the first time. You see how hard that big rascal is to break down. Thomas finally did it. He's just so good at finding the hidden yards in a game. He's the kind of guy that can move a pile and break tackles yards after contact. He's trying again. And just like that, Brandon, he always just seems to fall forward. You know, there are a lot of running backs in that scenario that try to kind of juke right or left. He just leans forward and kind of gains those extra two yards. Just like that at second and six. White is upended by Caleb Kelly, that freshman from Fresno, California. Yeah, this run back. defense got so much better in the second half of the season. I think a big reason why is because they started playing Caleb Kelly more way back at the Kansas game. He was the number seven rated outside linebacker coming out of high school and at 220 pounds helped set the edge for this Oklahoma defense. Now here's Auburn, they've shown this quick huddle, they're gonna look to do it again. Take the end around, White. First down, a tough one, fumble, Auburn recovers it. I think they're gonna say he was down, yeah. so he was down. No fumble on the play, Auburn football. First and ten, good run. Oboe with the pressure coming off the edge here in a critical third down, and Sean White, all 200 pounds, he's straining, broke a couple tackles, easily the left knees down, the left elbows down before that ball comes out. So it's first down and ten at the Sooner 45. <laughs> Whistle prior to the snap. Illegal substitution, 12 men on defense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Auburn can do that to you. Yeah, they go fast, and sometimes when they get first downs, they generate super tempo where they keep the same personnel grouping on the field and try to get up and catch you off guard. You know, one thing that Auburn hasn't done yet is dial up a deep shot down the field. There's a good area of the field here for them to maybe take a chance and see if they can find an explosive play. Stoops clearly did not agree with that decision. That's right. Pump it. Going up over the top. That ball just didn't come out no, good didn't. for Sean White. I mean, that was no. a wounded duck. It looked like he had an opportunity outside with his true freshman receiver, Eli Stove, but one-on-one, -on -one, it, it just didn't come out pretty. You know, he's battling that shoulder problem, and uh, after he threw a lot for a few days, they had a practice the other day in which he didn't throw the ball at all. They ran the plays, and he made the motion with the right hand, but uh, Gus felt that uh, they'd thrown the ball enough for the two or three previous days, so it's second down and five, but Sean White's been nursing that injury, and he clearly has been the best of the Auburn quarterbacks this year. There's that pitch now to Petway, and Petway stopped short of the first down, and uh, Stephen Parker's there again. You know, just if Oklahoma is able to turn Auburn into a one-dimensional team, that make it a lot easier for him. Yeah, no doubt about it. This is kind of a critical situation right here for Auburn. You're thinking maybe four down territory here, close to the 35-yard line with Cam Petway back in this offense. Take two cracks at it. If I'm Auburn, I'm running right downhill with big 36. White has thrown for 35, but Petway has run for 43. First down. Really no mystery here, just straight up the gut, straightforward in a simple zone play. That play right there really is the bread and butter for this Auburn offense in the run game. When they get the inside zone going, they're really tough to stop because then they can get the play action game going, they get the zone reads going with the quarterback. It gets tough. Petway, short of the 30, and uh, for more on Petway, let's go to Kaylee. 
Well, Brent, he's draft eligible, but he didn't even bother filling out the paperwork to get his draft grade. Back in November, he made it clear to everybody that he's coming back. He tweeted, for all the Auburn fans asking, I will be back next season. I've got some unfinished business. It becomes even more difficult, and that plays into the strength of Oklahoma. You folks who followed the Sooners, you know how many passing yards that Bob Stoops' team has given up this year. Substitution for Oklahoma now. They take Kelly, Caleb Kelly off the field. They go to a nickel look, extra DBs in this third and long scenario. They'll try Johnson as the running back on this third and eight, and uh, timeout called by Stoops. We'll take a break. 7.26 remaining in the first half here in New Orleans. American football players this close to Bourbon Street, you got to keep them active. You got to give them things to do. You got to have dance contests. You got to have bowling tournaments. You got seven days. You don't want anybody breaking curfew in New Orleans. Why, how would that ever happen? Here we go. Seven all now, 7.26 to go. This offense has to get wide receiver Tony Stevens going. Incomplete. Well, one problem with that, Jess, is they're a little disappointed in Tony. He hasn't uh, stepped it up. It's been those two freshmen down to stretch for him, Davis and Stowe. Well, and speaking about freshmen, what about the true freshman, Caleb Kelly? 19 right here coming off the edge. He's having a monster first half for the Oklahoma Sooners. They're trying to set up the slow screen outside to the running back carry on Johnson but just too much speed by Kelly we're excited about this young freshman so here comes the long field goal attempt by Daniel Carlson and he's as good as they come in college football this is a 49 yarder for the young man from Denver his younger brother is committed to Auburn also so here we go he's always the favorite folks what a leg yeah, Daniel Carlson is special, Brandon. You mentioned it. SEC Special Teams Player of the Year. Eight times in his career, he's hit a field goal 50 yards or longer. We call him Legatron for a reason. He said he's going to come back next year. It's great news for Gus Malzahn and the Auburn Tigers. I mean, his football just explodes off his foot. I mean, you can hear it all the way up here. Absolutely. Last foot I heard like that in the Sugar Bowl. Man by the name of Janet Kosti. First name Sebastian, Florida <laughs> State. Let's go to get more on Carlson. Here's Caleb. Well, Brent, Carlson's family on his mom's side, Alabama fans. How about that for an Auburn kid? Now his grandfather told him before they played Alabama, hey, you can kick six, seven field goals, but I still want Alabama to win the game. This is that, Caleb. Yeah, you think about for Gus Malzahn in the dome here. The New Orleans, I mean, any time they're within 38, 39, 40 yard line. I mean, you're you're basically in Daniel Carlson's wheelhouse. And the other the other part is how good he's been on touchbacks and kickoffs, like right now. 79% of his kickoffs have gone for touchbacks, second most in the nation. And when you have the defense that you have at Auburn, you force the opposing offense to have to drive the entire field to score. What a luxury that is if you're Gus Malls on. And if you're watching scouts, there's also that. Well, celebrating its 12th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Match, Allstate makes contributions to participating university general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds, and we certainly thank them for that. We're here at the Allstate Sugar Bowl on a Monday night. Can you believe, folks, it's 2017? Mm. Hope you had a wonderful celebration the other night. Got a chance to peek at that Clemson performance. Boy, wasn't that dandy against Ohio State? Of course, Alabama moved on by beating Washington. Joe Mixon's a running back. Breaks the daylight. No question about this young man's talent. 
Well, he has a great job of setting blocks up. Watch this right here. When he gets the handoff, he's not yet running full speed. He's letting the blocks develop in front of him. Then when he sees the crease, he puts his foot in the ground and he gets north. I think so many good running backs have that ability to be patient. Certainly Nixon, Nixon has that. Swing it to him. Block on the edge and he crosses midfield. So we get word that James Andrews, yes, that's the noted orthopedic surgeon, he's looking at Sean White's throwing arm over there on the sideline, and uh, Mr. Franklin is up and loosening up, and uh, it's been a troublesome couple of months here for White with that shoulder injury. Missed the last couple of games, actually was re-injured again in the Georgia game in which they lost. Baker Mayfield. How did he get out of that? How does Houdini do that? Yeah, I was just going to say Houdini. It's unbelievable. It's the second time now in this first half. Jeff Holland, number four, has been and had Baker Mayfield in his grasp. And just somehow, some way, Baker Mayfield's able to slip out and just keep playing. The thing I love about him, he plays fast, he plays with a sense of urgency, and he plays with so much confidence. He just gives this Oklahoma offense their swagger. That's what you were getting at. A little late picture of, of Sean White. There he is. He's going back to the locker room, folks. So it looks like we are going to see John Franklin at quarterback. Snatched out of the air by Jeffrey Mead. Well, if Sean White isn't able to return, then that completely changes the offense for the Auburn Tigers. They become much more one-dimensional as a running team. Now, the good news they get from John Franklin is a home run threat running the football. He's averaging 10 yards a carry. It'll be interesting to see how this impacts Auburn's offense. Can't beat OU one-dimensional football. Not going to happen. Hate to say it. First down and 10. Play action. And he handed it off to him indeed. And, uh, Fool me, but not that defensive front of Auburn. Yeah, they're just so deep up front. That time, number 95, Dontavious Russell, just defeats a double team and almost makes the play himself. And the real key, I think, all season long for this defensive line is getting number 55, Carl Lawson, back healthy and getting him on the field. Remember, two years ago, missed the entire season with an ACL injury. Last year, six games with a hip. But he's been able to stay healthy. He's been living in the opponent's backfield. That's Baxter, number one, motioning toward the top of your screen. P. Ryan. P. Ryan needs 83 yards tonight to uh, surpass the great Billy Sims, an all-time rushing yardage in Oklahoma. And so many good things the, the folks say about P. Ryan. What an outstanding young man he's been. And so far here tonight, I think he's been held to about 10 yards. Well, so many times in this game on third down, they've thrown the ball to Mixon. He's not on the field right now. Now, Pirine's a good receiver in his own right. You wonder how this changes Lincoln Riley's play call. Pirine crosses the 30-yard line. And well, I hope uh, you know coach Saban he's a workaholic but I but I hope he's able to sit back and relax and watch this game a little bit because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what he's doing right now he's in a film room and believe me he's got his hands full watching this explosive Clemson offense and trying to help Steve Sarkeesian catch up on the playbook <laughs> wishful thinking Boy, that was a that was a softball pitch for <laughs> yeah, you well, all right fourth down they're gonna go for it now on fourth and four and they bring Mixon into the game Rolling, throwing, Westbrook gives it! Oh my! On fourth and four, they strike, and it's first and goal. Heisman Trophy finalists to Heisman Trophy finalists. Mayfield able to scramble away again. Nobody blocks Russell coming off the left side. Just buys enough time. He had the one-on-one -on -one matchup, and what an accurate throw. How good is Mayfield throwing to his right? Mixon, touchdown! 
the Sooners lead for the first time in this Sugar Bowl. And I like the job by Baker Mayfield after an explosive play on fourth down, getting his offense lined up quickly, trying to catch Auburn off guard. We're used to Auburn doing that offensively. Oklahoma giving them a little taste of their own medicine. They get lined up quick. They love this double pull concept in their run game where they bring the backside guard and tackle. That time, Samia, Bobby Evans doing a great job. Extra bodies at the point of attack. Oklahoma's offense coming alive these last two drives. Schubert. 14 10. Mixon for six. Great games. Joe Mixon with a rush touchdown. Now we'll see how Auburn will attempt to solve the quarterback dilemma. From the two, carry on Johnson. Carry on stop at the 15 yard line. And uh, we check in uh, with Kaylee on Sean White. Kaylee. Well, Brent, we know that Sean White has been taken underneath the stadium for an x-ray on his right forearm with orthopedist Dr. Andrews right by his side. And so we can see John Franklin, young man out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, went to East Mississippi Community College for a time. And the, he's, that was better known as Last Chance U. And uh, you folks want to get yourself a little Netflix series and enjoy watching JC football. I highly recommend it. Jets is the one to tune me on to. Uh, <laughs> it's must watch TV. We're doing is. season two now. <laughs> Petway's in there with Frank. Frank was a very good runner, by the way. And you know, that might have kept him in check and opened it for Petway because on this read option, you better you better keep an eye on number five. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Brent. It changes everything now for Oklahoma's defense. They love zone read type plays now with John Franklin in the game. And because of that speed, you have to honor it outside. You've got to slow down your rush and make sure he doesn't keep the football to get outside because he is explosive. Again, averaging 10 yards a carry, and you're right. It does open up gaps inside now for the running backs. Goodness, what a hit he took from Ahmad Thomas. We've talked about Stephen Parker, the safety. Well, the other one, Thomas out of Miami, just unloaded on the DC. Do you remember when Steve Atwater hit Christian Akoya? Sure do. Is that Monday Night Football? Man, I, I mean, okay, I know we're in college, but whoa. You don't see that happen very often. Drove the big fellow back. Yeah, he did. Well, it's a first down and 10, and here comes the scrambler. So Mike Stoops has now got to be concerned about an entirely different looking offense. Yeah, no doubt about it, because Franklin's dropping back to pass. He's looking for one guy to get open, and if it's not there, he's just taken off. So you see Mike Stoops there now. Look at him. He's animated. Yeah, he's a Stoops brother. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> he's a Youngstown but dude. But he might have to think about, you know, do you want to blitz a mobile quarterback, or do you want to lay back? Do you want to start playing a spy? All different things now that he needs to consider. Now the first down, Pat Ray's an open field. And the linebackers just freeze for an extra split second, making sure that John Franklin actually hands this football off. And that allowed both guards that time, Alex Kozan and Braden Smith, to outflank that D-line. They just stick it with number 36. You wonder how comfortable Gus Malzahn is going at a very high tempo now, though, with John Franklin in the game. You may have to now slow things down a little bit to ensure the substitutions get in. John Franklin allows everyone to line up and be where they are. You can't have unnecessary penalties. It's another way that maybe this quarterback change affects this offense. First pass of the game. How about that? Right on the money to Stoke. Oh, he throws the ball like that. Look out. Oh, yeah. Listen, velocity has never been an issue with John Franklin. He's probably up there with Jeremy Johnson as the best arm of the three quarterbacks. But this is nice. A nice, easy completion, a curl route, and he hits Eli Stove right in the face mask. That'll help the one-time Florida State Seminole quarterback 
gain some confidence. Time out. Uh, the Sooners want to talk about it here. Minute and a half left in the first half. Backup quarterback Franklin driving them, and uh, you know Bob Stoops, of course, was a was a tremendous defensive assistant under Steve Spurrier. He, when you played for yeah, Steve, he was, our defensive, he was coordinator. Your defensive coordinator. Yeah, my first yeah. two years, he was unbelievable. Yeah. So I want to remind everybody, come out the Buick halftime of what the gang is here. Stan for Red Hill. He'll be the anchor down there. Mark May. Wonder if he's going to say anything about Ohio State tonight. And then the, there's Mac Brown, the old tech. There, there they are down there. There's, it, Mac, he's texting somebody now, and, uh, and Mark, he's looking at some stats. And it, there's Stan. <laughs> he's got the good smile on his face, and it, Happy New Year. Now, Stan, happy New Year. Stan, Stan's from Louisiana. He's a big Louisiana guy. Yeah, he yeah. is. Oh, yeah. He's got to be happy with what Coach O's doing. Look, look at him. He's just but loving he, the camera. He, knows, he's he, knows. <laughs> he's, he sees that like he's, other guys he's are getting ready for work. He's got to get ready to work. But Stan, that's the camera. Million dollar Man, smile. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Stan, nice to have you with us. Great job, you guys. Fun to have you here. So we got a first down here just for Auburn. The ball has crossed the Sooners 40 yard line. Oklahoma and Auburn each with one timeout apiece. Carry on Johnson, a running back for the Tigers. So they've looked at the defense, changed up at the line. Hunter going to fire again, and it's snatched out of the air at the 26. Tony Stevens, holy Johnny Unitas, what's going on here? Well, there's big Tony Stevens, the guy that was their leading receiver, and he kind of disappeared in the second half of the season, but that six foot four frame of catch rate is reaching back and looking good. That was a twisting gain there by Johnson. It's a big drive, Brent, for this offense. They need to try to generate some points here at the end of the half and kind of re-see some of this momentum that Oklahoma has taken away. Remember, the Sooners are going to receive first in the second half. Second down and six. Firing ends and incomplete and went back for Stevens. So here's your third down and six. The one thing that Franklin has to be careful of because it's a three point certainty almost. 99.9 with Carl. So you don't want to give that up right now. Well, you're one of those situations right here. If it's not open, either check it down or find Franklin. I'm just taking off. I'm trying to get this myself with my legs. You live and die by the blitz if you're Oklahoma. This is a dangerous situation to be in. If you want to blitz Franklin, if you miss him, he could take off here in man to man situation and hurt you. Incomplete. That was Will Hastings working downfield. He was well covered that time by Will Sunderland. It's still a good drive, right? No, oh, absolutely. You lose Sean White. You know, no reason to panic. John Franklin kind of comes out. You run the zone read. You gash him a couple times on the ground through a nice completion to Eli Stove. Help him get into a rhythm. And I think setting up Daniel Carlson for what should be an automatic field goal, that's a win if you're on it. Thirty-nine yarder, two for two. Got 41 seconds to go, and uh, we want to talk a little championship ball here. We've mentioned Clemson and Alabama. Next Monday now, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's presented by AT&T. I want to remind everybody that um, the only team that's been in the arena with both of them and lost to both of them, by the way, is Auburn. So when we had Gus Malzahn, we had a chance to ask him about this matchup. And he has some very nice things to say about Clemson. Yeah, I think Clemson has a real shot to win this one, win their first national title since 1981. We're going to talk about Alabama's defense for the next week, and we should. They've scored 11 touchdowns, but Clemson's defense has been unbelievable this year. I think their front can give Alabama's offensive line some major issues. I think Clemson offensively has the weapons to hurt that defense, particularly Mike Williams outside a receiver who didn't play in last year's national championship game, obviously. And Deshaun Watson's going to be motivated. Had a great game against them last year in the national title game, too. And Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator at Clemson, of course, he was on the Oklahoma staff for a number of years. But Gus said that he thinks offensively. 
Clemson is the only team in the country that can move the ball against the Alabama defense. He said only one he's seen, and he said Deshaun Watson is the best player in college football. That was Gus Malzahn. So the ball is taken by Westbrook. He'll take a knee. Oklahoma with uh, with 41 seconds. That that'll be a dandy. Well, the biggest disappointment in the playoffs, of course, was the performance by Ohio State and. Uh, and a great, great Big Ten did not have a good bowl season. However, listen, hats off to Penn State. I know they lost, but I'm going to tell you, they went out guns a blazing, and they showed a lot of people that maybe when you win a conference like the Big Ten and you beat another team, maybe you should be in the play. I'm just saying, maybe. I got a lot of good friends up there in Columbus. Oh, Herbie just went nuts. Oh, come on, <laughs> Herbie. First down and 10 now. Nixon's a running back. And I was going to say, as explosive as Oklahoma is with the receivers they have, and the quarterback they have, I think in a lot of other games, 41 seconds to go and a timeout in their back pocket, they'd be throwing and trying to at least get a field goal out of this. But I think because of how disruptive Auburn's been up front on defense, I think right now Lincoln Riley and Bob Stoops are help, happy just to run this clock out here at the end of the half, going at halftime with the lead. That's what he's doing. Tiger fans are going. OU fans are cheering. And Bob knows that his offense will receive the second half kickoff. We got a one point ball game here. Favorite Oklahoma 14. Auburn 13 in New Orleans. Coach Stoops is with Kaylee so let's go to Kaylee. Well coach the combination of Baker Mayfield and D.D. Westbrook's been lethal all season. What has Auburn done to make that connection difficult today? Well they're covering well and uh, you know that, that as much as anything and there isn't anything special that we've got to go to D.D. all the time. We've we've moved the ball pretty well with the other guys after that first drive and score by Auburn. How did your defense adjust to what they were doing? Well more than anything settled down and, and started lining up correctly they, with their some of their pace and some of the different alignments they gave us. We didn't handle it very well and lately we have been. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thanks. All right Kaylee. Thanks a lot. One point sooner lead. SEC. Big 12. Big boy football in New Orleans. And we welcome you back to the All-State Sugar Bowl on a New Orleans Monday night. Oklahoma and Auburn slugging it out with the Sooners up by a point. 14-13 uh, just, uh, as, just as we expected. Yeah, explosive offense from Oklahoma. A lot of playmakers all over the field, and they really kind of came alive there in the second quarter. I think the key for them was getting Joe Mixon going and running back. I thought he really made his presence felt catching the football. Three catches, a lot of them came on third down. None more bigger than this one right here, though. This was third and 22 when he snuck out of the backfield, caught the wheel route. That set up their first touchdown. He's done a nice job running the football as well. Ten carries so far for 45 yards. This score, nice patient running in the red zone. Now about Baker Mayfield. He's been running for his life. Hasn't been able to set up behind center, but he's scrambling and throwing the football so well, especially when rolling to his right. He's been able to buy himself some time, distribute the football, I think this is an offense now that has their swagger back here as we start the second half. And of course you can see the passing yards for Oklahoma 145 only 56 for Auburn but look at the rush yard 123 Auburn and 80 for OU and uh, Auburn with more first downs in this game and they scored their touchdown on the opening drive of this football game after that they settled for the two field goals in the second quarter and OU scored both its touchdowns in the second quarter. And Westbrook will take this out of the end zone. It'll come out on the uh, 
25 yard line. Let's check in down below with Caleb. Well, Brent, we will not see Sean White back on the field with Auburn in this game. The injury to his right forearm is serious, Coach Malzahn says. He doesn't know for certain yet if it's broken or not, but Malzahn could confirm he will not be back in this game after that hit he took from the Oklahoma defense. They are going with John Franklin. It'll be his game to play. Malzahn said, we need to run the ball anyway. Let's go run it. Yeah, that was that first uh, clip you saw of him, and then you could see like a wounded duck. He threw that pass, and it's clear that there, there were problems. He tried to play with the injured shoulder against Georgia, we might point out. So uh, he's, a he's a tough young, and, and uh, Mixon will open here as a running back. to the 32 yard line Holsey making the stop for Auburn. You know I think a big key for this Auburn defense here in the second half is they have to finish plays in Oklahoma's backfield. There have been multiple times in that first half where it appeared they had Baker Mayfield in their grasp but weren't able to get him to the ground. They could easily have three sacks right now for this D line. They're getting pressure. They've got to finish plays. Back Mixon. Got the edge for the first down. Lincoln Riley is setting up a shot play. We've seen a couple times in the first half, they pitch the football to the tailback and then they throw the quick swing pass right there. Eventually here, Baker Mayfield's gonna fake a pitch or fake a swing. And he's gonna take a shot deep down the field. So Auburn has to be ready for that. P. Ryan checks in. Saw Lincoln Riley, I, I've got a great anecdote about Mike Leach. Lincoln was a walk on at Texas Tech and it. It's this game unfolds. He's got so many great leech stories. One of the great characters in coaching. First down and ten. Rolls to the right and throws back to the left. Snatched. And another first. And that was Jeffrey Mee. Good set of hands. Rangy fella. He's really coming on, Brent, the second half of the season. Six foot five. You mentioned the size and that catch radius. They're taking advantage of a size matchup because Meade at 6'5", working against Javaris Davis, only 5'10". I've got bad math skills. I think that's seven inches, the height <laughs> differential, and you've got to take advantage of it. Oh, flea flicker. Wide open. To the 15-yard line, Mark Andrews has scored one of their two touchdowns. It's a bowl game. So you always expect some trickeration. Nice job here on the flea flicker. And Mark Andrews did a really good job at tight end, kind of breaking down, making it look like he was going to stock block somebody in the secondary. And those are sometimes the hardest throws to complete for a quarterback. You've got him so wide open, you don't want to overthrow it, so you underthrow it badly. Most important thing is you come up with a completion. 33 yards. Nixon for nine on first down. And this is a superb opening drive in the second half for Stoops and the Sooners. And Lincoln Riley, just the entire playbook right now at his disposal. They're attacking outside on quick throws. They're running the football up the gut. Got some throwback misdirection, and then the misdirection on the flea flicker. He's got this defense completely on their heels. Quick to Westbrook. Touchdown. OU strikes quickly with the first drive of the second half. Well, D.D. Westbrook was not lined up where he normally does. He's normally on the right side of the offensive formation outside. This Auburn defense was told to be alert for it. That time he lined up to the left. They brought him in motion. It was a quick bubble outside. He had way too much separation with the defender, Stephen Roberts, and then a foot race, D.D. Westbrook's gonna win that every time. And Mark Andrews held the edge for him with a fine block at the goal line. The folks got a glimpse of that. Seabrook tucks on the extra point. 21-13. How oh, they loved it. Yeah, baby, that's Sooner ball. Watching over the hard work and determination of Blimp for the athletes for 60 years. Goodyear, official sponsor of the college football playoff.
Welcome back to New Orleans. Well, Jeff Sauber needs to uh, respond. The big key, I think, here for this offense now with John Franklin is not getting in obvious passing situations on third down. They're not as efficient a passing team this year when John Franklin's been in the game. They've been more explosive in the running game, but it's going to be important now that they're winning on first and second down and not forcing number five to have to win this game throwing the ball. See the play selection here so far. This is what they do. They're a running team, but they want to get that run game going to set up play action shots. To Petway, no game. And this defense from Oklahoma is now playing the quarterback. Watch Neville Gallimore, a defensive end. He's waiting for the quarterback to keep. He's right here. He's going to loop outside, daring Franklin to run his way. It's a good adjustment by Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator. They weren't playing the zone read that way when Sean White was in the game. Johnson and Franklin takes it away, really. Kind of riding with his running back. And Kelly, who had a terrific first half you talked about. He's him, all over the stop. place, yeah. He's making stops in the run game. He's also done a good job creating pressure. And this is what we talked about. This is not where Auburn wants to be living here in the second half. Third and long scenarios with a quarterback that hasn't been overly accurate this season. Third down and nine. Franklin keeps it. Not going to get the first down. Love that the idea. was Parker, Jordan Parker. Love the idea by Mike Stoops here. You're not going to blitz a mobile quarterback. Sit back in a big zone. Set, drop seven guys. Keep the football in front of you. And when Franklin decides to take off, because you know he's going to do it, rally to the football and make a solid tackle. He's calling a good game. These Stoops brothers. It's... Their bread and butter defense. I know from first first hand experience, Bob Stoops, who's our DC back at Florida, is one of the best. Westbrook singles for a catch at the 33. 21-13. Oklahoma leads Auburn in the Sugar Bowl. Oklahoma, the Big 12-21. Auburn at the SEC, 13. Stop for a yard loss. There's another talented true freshman in Derek Brown, very athletic, 6'5", 330 pounds. They can play him inside. They can also play him at defensive end. He's going to give them a bunch of versatility in years to come. We talked about this being the strength of this defense. This D-line is going to be their strength, I think, for multiple years. Gus Malzahn and Kevin Steele have done a great job recruiting at that position. Second down, play action. It's a drop by Geno Lewis, the transfer from Penn State. Now setting up third and long. So a mass substitution for Auburn. They bring their best pass rusher, Carl Lawson, back on the field. Now he's been working most of this game opposite the freshman right tackle, Bobby Evans. Looks like this time they've got him up against Orlando Brown. The Big 12 Offensive Lineman of the Year. What a matchup this is. Third down at 11. And there's interference. 
Javaris Davis. I think it was a free play anyway, Brent, because they had offsides on Marlon Davidson, so I think Mayfield knew he had a freebie, and he just decided to take a shot. There are two fouls on the play, both on the defense. Offside, number three. That penalty is declined. Pass interference. Number 13, 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. I think he means number 31. It was Javaris Davis working over there on Jeffrey Meade. We talked about the size matchup and the advantage that he has. A lot of hand fighting, grabbing the jerseys. Just kind of runs them out of bounds. I think that's a good call. So it's first down and 10 for OU. A lot of these first down looks, Auburn's playing press man coverage, and they're bumping... D.D. Westbrook one-on-one. -on -one. I'm, I'm curious to see how much longer it'll take until Baker Mayfield takes a shot to D.D. Westbrook out there. Auburn is loading the box, trying to stop the run. They want to take away Mixon and Piran, but that's leaving the Bolitnikoff winner outside on an island. I think you have to take advantage of that down here. He brings a physical presence, too, to this offense. He's got great vision and has an ability to find holes and cut back. But I love this. It's running through contact. Simple inside zone play. There's the vision for the cutback. If a DB is going to tackle you, that's got to be a business decision. Again, into the heart of that uh, he OU defense. Comes into this game with 974 rushing yards. It's pretty amazing when you consider that he hurt himself, hurt his leg against K-State, missed the next three games, and he shares carry with Joe Mixon still to have the production he's had. Remarkable. Here comes the end of the round, and Westbrook looking to throw it. Pump fake. Great move. Crosses the 35-yard line. He's an entertainer. He sure is, and Brent, red alert. He's not lined up outside to the right side of the formation. He's up in the slot again, so you got to know something's coming if you're Auburn. This time they set up the reverse pass. But how, about, how, how many times do you see receivers in that situation just lob it up down the field and force it? Just a heads-up play by Westbrook, and a nice job making a lot of Auburn defenders look silly. He is really good in space. Down to the Auburn 33-yard line. D. Ryan steps to the 29. One of the best running back tandems in all of college football. And obviously a huge luxury when you've got two NFL caliber guys that can spell each other, keep each other fresh. You really don't have to change the call, the playbook calling and the, and the play calling your Lincoln Riley so much because in a lot of ways they have similar uh, similar skill sets. Play action. Mayfield looks back. Wide open and he overthrew Smallwood. Jordan Smallwood had broken free in the end zone. Baker knows it. Yeah, there was a coverage bust down at the bottom of the screen. That was Joshua Holsley working one on one with Smallwood. Look at the right side. I think the cornerback thought there was zone coverage, thought he had safety help. So he squatted. That allowed Smallwood to get behind him. And Baker Mayfield, one of the most accurate quarterbacks in college football, he doesn't miss those very often. Third down and six. Drops it off. Westbrook. There's a penalty flag thrown by the line judge on the near side. I think they're going to call this for a pick play on Oklahoma. There was blocking downfield by the tight end Mark Andrews. 
on a pass that crossed the line of scrimmage. One of the OU coaches had to be uh, told to leave. There is no foul for the offensive of pass play. interference on the previous play. The ball was caught behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, one of the coaches had gone way out. He was livid because he saw that the ball was caught. I mean, that was really close to being, I mean, to me, when I watched it real time, I thought that D.D. Westbrook caught that beyond the line of scrimmage. That was really close. Mark Andrews was full on engaged, blocking an Auburn defender. I mean, it is close. Let's go back and watch this again. Here's Andrews right here. Here's the line of scrimmage. Watch where Westbrook is when he catches this. Looks like the line of scrimmage is right about the 29-yard line. Oh, it's like right at the line of scrimmage. That is close. Roberts making the stop. Right there, just yeah. look at that. I think with, the, with the rhythm they've got going on offense and how well their defense is playing right now, I'm going for this one, Bob Stoops, and I'm running behind my best offensive lineman, Orlando Brown, on the left side. I go back and maybe review and see whether or not this was a first down. Find out where Didi Westbrook was tackled. Looks like he had to get to about the 23 yard line. So there's that line of scrimmage line right there. So they're saying it was caught behind the line of scrimmage, so there was no offensive pass interference. Trying to break a tackle from Steven Roberts. Where's the football in relation to that line? When is, is he? Does that right, I think his right knee touched down on the turf, maybe back closer towards the 25. See, right there, it's down. Question is, where's the football? It's in his left hand, way be behind the first down marker. So they backed it up. And it will be fourth down from the 25 yard line. 42 yard field goal here for Austin Seibert, who's got a really good leg, but he's missed some long kicks this year, so definitely not a gimme here for Oklahoma. So Austin. Hey, Jess, what do you think of Austin's shoes, man? <laughs> to the right. All right. Auburn just needs some sort of momentum. They need a swing. They needed something good to happen to help give them some confidence and reinvigorate this football team. Off to the right. Stays at 21-13. Seven and a half minutes. Look how happy Gus is. That's three games as they lose to both Georgia and Alabama, and they certainly were not healthy. But here, with a great stop, Jess, trailing 21-13, they get the ball back and ready to go to work. Petway will check in. Yeah, the 30 yard line. Yeah, Brent, this offensive line now for Auburn has to start taking over. They are much improved versus the first part of the season. They made a couple changes, moved Austin Golson from left tackle back to his natural position at center. Darius James moved into the left tackle spot. Robert Leffert, right tackle, started playing better. This all happened around that LSU game. They really gelled here as the season's gone along. That way, twisting and prevented by more than half the. No. OU defensive getting that first down. Oh, no doubt about it. It's important here, I think, that Auburn starts getting some more push up the middle. They've got to work some of these combo blocks on the inside zone running plays and chip up, climb into the second level to get a hat on a hat. Start getting some movement. 
and get this zone read game going for John Franklin to take advantage of. But it's going to be the big fellas up front that need to make the difference. Third down and one. Got six offensive linemen now in the game. There's a blitz. The blitzer is wow. kind of Stephen Parker. Yeah, there and normally, tackle. Brent, quarterbacks don't keep the ball on zone reads when there's a blitz coming up from the outside. And there was a little bit of, of an issue there with the fake handoff. Franklin almost fumbled that football. That was a big problem that Franklin had back in fall camp, running the zone reads with the execution and the ball handling. And now what do you do if you're Gus Malzahn? I think again with Cam Petway, this situation, you're trying to spark your offense. It's a bowl game. I don't hate it. Hand the football off to the big fellow, let him get north-south. Here we go, fourth down. Timeout. Auburn. Now you fail to pick up the first down of this situation, mm. and you leave yourself in a deep hole right now. No doubt you're about down, it. You're down 21-13, and uh, with a backup quarterback, Brent, we talked about it. Yeah, this offense is not really built to play catch up. If they get down too much, they're not built to just start spreading the field and throw the football all over the place like Oklahoma could do. So you're right. This is a key decision right here. Easily the biggest decision of the game for Gus Malzahn and offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley. Well, first take movie DSPN on Tuesday. Same time, different place. Stephen A., Max, and Molly will continue to discuss and debate the most compelling and entertaining topics for the world of sports just on ESPN. 10 a.m. Eastern to noon. Also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. I think Gus Malzahn thought twice about it. Kind of, to your point, Brent, realize the situation. What happens to this game if they don't get this fourth down deep in their own end? They're now going to punt to D.D. Westbrook, who, remember, against Kansas earlier this year, took a punt back to the house. Got to get great coverage. Yeah, you're down only one touchdown. What a beautiful punt. Gold Westbrook back for the fair catch at around the 15-yard line. A 51-yard punt by Phillips. Out of Greenwood, Mississippi. Rainy New Year here in New Orleans. You walking home, Jeff, or you're <laughs> I'm taking your ride. Hey, Evan. So, you stuck at a work thing. They're on the other side. So, Mixon returns as the running back. Play action from Mayfield. They drop it off to Joe. Hey. Nine-yard gain on that play for Mixon. Tremendous coverage that time on an island by Carlton Davis on D.D. Westbrook. There was the bump-and-run man-to-man situation where Oklahoma wanted to take a shot on the post, and Carlton Davis was blanketed all over number 11. There was nowhere to go deep down the field. Nice job against the most dangerous receiver in college football. Mixon tiptoes to daylight, and here he comes again. And out of bounds at the 40-yard line. It's the patience again, the ability to set up blocks and allow the holes to create themselves before he hits full speed. I love this. Just kind of gears down. There it is, and now he's out. And he puts on the Jets. He's got that home run speed. Ten runs for 30 yards or more this year. Tied for fourth most in the nation. 35 yards on that run. He's going to have a 100-yard game here. You know, Jess, apparently some people were very upset when I wish this young man well at the next level. Let me make something perfectly clear. What he did with that young lady was brutal, uncalled for. He's apologized. He was tearful. He got a second chance. He got a second chance from Bob Stoops. I happen to pull for people with second chances, okay? Let me make it absolutely clear. 
Well, I hope he has a wonderful career and he teaches people with that brutal, violent video. Okay? Second down and nine. P. Ryan checks in as the running back. 35. And P. Ryan to the 26-yard line. What a block by the center, Eric Wren. He's working one-on-one -on, -one on Montrevious Adams all by himself without any help. Right here, he's going to get him walled off to the inside. Not a lot of people have been able to do this this year. Just gives enough room for P. Ryan to get outside. What about this offensive line for Oklahoma and how much better they've gotten throughout the course of the year? They're young. We've got three sophomores and a freshman playing up front. Because of injuries earlier in the season, they lost their left guard, Cody Ford, to a leg injury against Ohio State. Had to shuffle the lineup the first four games. Last eight, same starting lineup. They've built their confidence in gel. High snap. Mayfield in a foot race. Scoops it up, and then I got to tell you, Jess, Baker, and he might have been shaken up on that play going down. Let's let's watch this. Looks like he may have a jump back up. Is he objecting to uh, the way he was hit back there? It was a loose ball. Well, this might be intentional grounding if he didn't get to outside of the tackle box. There wasn't a receiver within the area of where he threw this. I think this is why the why Auburn Tigers fans are, are booing. Take a look at this again. Snap over his head. Can't really see where he throws it, whether or not there was that's, a receiver back there in the area. That's Lawson. Right, watch Lawson as he goes after him. I guess they're saying that Mark Andrews, the tight end 81, was, was the guy in the vicinity. So after he gets a great block on Adams, the very next play, Eric Cran snaps the football over Mayfield's head. What a heads-up play, by the way, by Mayfield to avoid the big loss. Second down and 10. Mixon returns. Mixon closing in on 100 yards rushing, and he has 89 yards in pass receiving. Play action to Mixon. There is Andrews again. Inside the five-yard line, Holsey bringing him down for Auburn. Mark Andrews, 6'5", 250, fantastic athlete with speed, and down near the red zone, this is where he's done his most damage this year. Really good over the middle of the field, and the red zone offense tonight for Oklahoma has been outstanding. Three trips, three touchdowns, and Auburn has the third-best red zone defense in the nation. Coming in, only 34% of opponents' drives were going for touchdowns. First out and goal for the Sooners. D.D. Westbrook in the slot. You don't see him in there normal. This should be bells and whistles for Auburn. Here he comes. Mixon's going to keep it on a fake reverse. Out of bounds, just short of the end zone. That was Holsey who prevented Mixon from scoring. How many great plays has Lincoln Riley dialed up using D.D. Westbrook and moving him around in different spots? Let's double check this again, make sure he didn't get in. Right foot in bounds. Did the football break the plane? Take a look at this again. And did his body at any point ever touch the pylon? Still in bound. I think that's a touchdown. Ooh. You know, uh, Jess, we're blessed with one of the best officials that I was ever around up here in the booth, Bill Lamagne. And I know that Bill had a quick chance to uh, take a look at it. The Sooner fans are very, very excited as they look at this. And, uh, Bill, what's your feeling about that ball? Replay's going to reverse this to a touchdown. He reached in and had the ball inside the pylon before he was down. So this is a score. You, uh, all you have to do is get the ball over or inside or touch the pylon, and you have a touchdown. Tough play for the official to call, but re replay's going to reverse this. Yeah, his feet were inbounds. inbounds he didn't touch the, the pylon with his right hand, which would have put him out of bounds. That would have put him out, correct. I, I told you Lamonde hadn't <laughs> lost his fastball. No, he, no right well, down the pipe, too. Let's replay does first. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice having an extra set of eyes up it here, is isn't up it? here, huh? Hey, and I don't want to blow smoke, but these officials have been on top of this game start to finish so far. I don't want to jinx them. But they've had an excellent game. The calls have been solid. And um, I think the replay team is going to do a great job on this one. Well, this is a good Big Ten crew. Yes, it is. Uh, referee O'Neill and, uh, and this gang, they do a good job. I had an opportunity to work with several of these people that are on my crew over the last few years. 
And it's really a solid group of guys. Paul Carey was able to get the ball inside the pylon, which results in a touchdown. Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan That's right down the pipe. Lamonte well, brings the heat, baby. That is Nixon's second touchdown of this game. Tacking on the extra point. It's really interesting to watch this last touchdown play with all the different bells and whistles kind of going on in the misdirection. Baker Mayfield was kind of in the shotgun. He started kind of walking towards the line of scrimmage like he was maybe going to change the play. Look at this again. Under center, starts kind of walking out. Then all of a sudden there's the direct snap to Mixon, trying to catch him off guard. They've got Dede Westbrook lined up in the slot. They've shown a couple reverses, a couple jet sweeps, a reverse pass. Everybody on defense runs with number 11. That sets up Samaj P. Ryan. Outside one on one, who's closing in. Or sorry, Mixon outside one on one. And with that kind of athlete in space, it's, it's tough for any defense. Mixon is closing in on a 200 yard game here receiving and running. Yeah, total just, yards, uh, absolutely. Just so you know about the young man. Well, consider this. This Oklahoma offense, they have 413 yards already, and you're right, he's really been the catalyst. They've done a good job finding ways to get him touches, get him involved. Caught on the one-yard line by Truett. Truett short of the 20-yard line. And now Jess Auburn Having lost its starting quarterback, and uphill battle here. And it's 15 points. It's not yet panic mode. If your Gus Malls on in Auburn, you don't have to start throwing the football every play, but you absolutely need to start gashing this defense, running it on the ground. I think you have to give Oklahoma and their front seven a lot of credit because we talked about how their toughness was going to be challenged. They've held up pretty good. Through it. And it'll be second down. Yeah, Auburn needs to get movement on the defensive ends for Oklahoma. They've got really good athletes in DJ Ward and Austin Roberts, but they're only 265, 275 pound players that in the past have gotten moved. I think that's where Auburn needs to be attacking there on the edge. Complete and it's third down. Kyle Davis working deep, number 86. Very important here in this situation, anticipating that Franklin may scramble if nothing's open right away. As a defense, you have to maintain lane integrity in your pass rush. You cannot get out of a gap because if you give number five one split second, he is gone. And not just maybe go get the first down gone, he can take it to the house. Now it's third down. Drops it off, and it'll be fourth down and six. We're going to get a hold on the guard, Alex Kozan. He was pulling all the way across the formation, and Obo Okoronkwo was just too fast in. Kind of grabbed him, looked by around the neck, and dragged him to the floor. Offense number 63. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. Let's go back and uh, take a closer look here at Franklin under pressure just two plays ago when he missed a post and right after he threw it kind of grabs the right throwing him it's kind of hard to tell if an injury could have occurred obviously he wasn't touched on that play Westbrook is back deep to return this punt for OU
Fair catch at about the 27 yard line. There is a, obviously a third quarterback over there for Auburn. As you see, Franklin's going in and receiving medical attention. Jeremy Johnson is over there. And Kaylee, uh, what are you hearing about Franklin? Well, Brent, before that last drive, Franklin was getting his right forearm massaged out by an athletic trainer. When I asked what was going on, they said, oh, he just needed to stretch it out. But there's definitely concern for what he's feeling in that right arm. Yeah, how about the irony in all this, guys? Because we came into this saying how, how much confident, more confident they were with getting healthy at, at quarterback and running back and how it gave this offense confidence. Starting quarterback now out, and Sean White. Looks like Franklin's favoring that throwing hand as well. And this is kind of back to where they left off at the end of the regular season on offense. Samaje Pirine has rushed for 46 yards. Remember, he needs 83 to pass Billy Sims. You know, the one that I was going to tell a little anecdote about uh, Baker Mayfield, we got distracted. I, I just said to him, Baker, Mom and Dad, why did they call you Baker? I said, uh, he said, well, my dad had a good buddy by the name of Baker Montgomery, and my mom loved the name. And when she told Dad when she was pregnant with me that she was going to name me Baker, he said, no, 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 we don't. And then he said, I'll tell you what. Be Baker if the middle name is Reagan after the president. <laughs> so here's Baker. In a foot race now. Stands his ground, throws a first down to Geno Lewis. He is amazing on the move. Yeah, Always looking to throw the ball. Unbelievable. And Auburn generally doesn't have issues with these types of players. But he's just been remarkable. He's just been buying time over and over. Look at this. It's a good job by the offensive line, giving him a place to step up. They think the play's over. He reverses field, keeps his wits about him, gets his feet underneath him. And it's an accurate throw, and Baker Mayfield is on fire right now. And there was a penalty late in that play. It was over. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense, number five. That's Gino. Yards from the, end of the, line. the line of the game has been achieved. It's first down. Yeah, Brian, I think he spun the ball on the turf after he made that catch. It was, it was taunting, and it's not going to make Bob Stoops too happy. I'll tell you, I mean, this is kind of, this is where the game might, might blow wide open here. If Oklahoma can march down the field and score a touchdown, we talked about the issues Auburn's having on offense. I mean, it, this thing could be close to over. Makes a big catch on a scramble play. Auburn's frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> It spins well on this. He does. Yeah, yeah. It's a new turf here in the Superdome. Steady diet of P. Ryan, and uh, I talked to another coach in the Big 12 about Mayfield. And I said, he said, Brent, he just never gives up on a play, and he escapes, and you can't stick with his wide receivers long enough to cover them. Well, they work the scramble drill so much in practice, something I think they're very, very good at because they know Baker Mayfield, when things aren't open, he's going to scramble to throw, not run. And these wide receivers and their quarterback, they've been on the same page really ever since they started playing Big 12 conference play back in early October against TCU. Boy, oh, boy, have they been good. End of the third quarter, 28-13. Auburn's only touchdown came on the first drive of this football game. After that, the Sooners took control. Midfield, breaks free. There's a penalty flag. I think they may say late hit here. Interesting to see where Geno Lewis, where his feet were. This contact was made by Trey Matthews. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. Well, that was really close. And Gino Lewis is kind of tight roping the left sidelines. Watch where his feet are here. Still in bounds. Still, he's technically out of bounds right there. And I, I don't really fault Trey Matthews for that. That's a hard one to pull up on because it wasn't so obvious. And I think Trey Matthews was trying to ensure the receiver's out of bounds. Well, that adds insult to injury here on this drive. Oklahoma on the doorstep here of blowing this game wide open. There is big number 78, that left tackle. Matthews receiving some medical attention. Orlando Brown. Double team will come that direction. Baker breaks free for a first down across the 15-yard line. 
this offensive line just Bobby Evans Drew Samia Eric Wren Ben Powers and big Orlando Brown have taken charge yeah uh, against easily the best D line they've seen all season and that's the impressive part to me and, and good news for Sooners fans four of these guys are coming back next year including Orlando Brown who had an opportunity it's a redshirt sophomore to enter the draft probably would still get drafted very high he's going to come back and play his junior year great news for an offense it's going to get Baker Mayfield back too there's a total eclipse of left tackle and Mixon was stopped after a short game Trey Williams linebacker making the stop got to force a field goal attempt here if you're Auburn cannot allow a touchdown Again, this has been one of the best red zone defenses all season long, but when they've been inside their own 20 yard line, four drives, four touchdowns allowed. Auburn has not seen this kind of offensive efficiency in this area of the field. They need Carl Lawson, Montrevious Adams, and their playmakers here to step up and make something happen. Second down and nine. Field again. Little was wide open. First down and goal, Oklahoma. Well, they've run the swing pass to Joe Mixon so much that it's completely affecting the defense. So they're going to run Mixon out this way. Watch the flow over top by Auburn defensively, and that clears out the hole in the middle of the field. So a nice job by Lincoln Riley, the offensive coordinator, setting these QB draws up late. Now they're going to go to the Wildcats, Samaj P. Ryan. Inside the five yard line, he's earned a living this season, these types of situations. Mayfield is split out to the right. Ryan. Touchdown, Oklahoma. There is Bob Stoops and Lincoln Riley making sure that P. Ryan gets a touchdown in this game here tonight. Give Carson Meyer. And Dimitri Flowers a lot of credit because they paved that way for P. Ryan on the outside. They get some great down blocking by the offensive line. In that Wildcat package, two fullbacks. Just too physical. Austin Seibert. I think I may have called him Seibert. I apologize earlier in the game. His mom texted me. I mean, yeah, she's, did she let you yeah, know? Yeah, get, get, that, get that right. It's 2017, partner. You, you guys get a lot of information from me. Last call. Quick to Westbrook. Going corner, touchdown. OU strikes quickly. Mix in, touchdown. Hey, we welcome you back to the Allstate Sugar Bowl. What a fine evening here in New Orleans, especially for Oklahoma fans. And let me give you fans back home, the OU fans, another piece of good news. Buddy Heald, who plays across the street for the New Orleans Pelicans, he's averaged only 8.6 a game tonight. He hit Cleveland and LeBron James for 20 points up in Cleveland. Now the Pelicans lost. And here's Johnson for Auburn. Out to the 20 yard line. And uh, another reminder. NFL playoffs start with wild card game 4:20 p.m. The Oakland Raiders, who unfortunately lost Derek Carr, visit the Houston Texans. The Texans are favored in this one, but they too have a quarterback issue, and maybe Brock Osweiler will get a second chance with head coach Tom O'Brien. We'll see about that first down and ten. And now Jeremy Johnson, the big fella, has taken over as the quarterback. Beautiful throw on first down. Well, in a situation now, down three possessions, when it looks like you have to throw the ball to get back in the game, now you make the move to Jeremy Johnson. He's a better thrower than John Franklin, and he has tremendous arm talent. He can make the wild throw, as you just saw right there. It's interesting. They had been three and out on their three previous drives here in this half, and now they bring Stove around in for about a yard penalty over there I don't I don't see a flag and yeah, we'll check in with Kaylee well Brent Jeremy Franklin spent the duration of that last 
OU possession, getting his right arm massaged by athletic trainers, talking about cramping up. They were pumping him with electrolytes. He tried as much as he could to continue to work it out, but you see Johnson in the game, Franklin with his helmet on the sidelines. Johnson takes off on second and eight. You know, Jeremy Johnson was an outstanding high school basketball player, and just when we first saw him as a quarterback, Nick Marshall had been suspended for a half. Against Arkansas. And we went in and we came away saying, this guy is a can't miss prospect. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I think because of him that year, two years ago, this team was picked to win the SEC. Just too many bad interceptions. Just seemed like he never was able to live up to his natural talent and capabilities. Seeing if he can pull something out of the hat here late in this game. And it's great to see a youngster like this, though. You know, he still continued to hold his head high, no went doubt. to class, continued to study. And help the other quarterbacks, too. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, he lost the job, had a chance to compete for it this past offseason. He's a guy you root for. And I'll tell you what, at 6'5", 235 pounds, with his athleticism, he provides explosive play opportunity to this offense that they need desperately right now. Second down and five. Here's Petway. I don't know if he was able to get it. It looks like he's going to get the spot. Well, he's definitely, Johnson has definitely given the Auburn offense a lift here. I like the idea. I think you can attack them conventionally running the football with Petway and, and with Stanton Pruitt and Eli Stove on jet sweeps and then feel a lot better throwing the football from the pocket here and see if you can find a one-on-one -on -one matchup outside to win. They haven't taken any shots deep down the field. They've got to try at least one. Sideline throw, and that is short of the first down, Tony Stevens. And that was awesome by Jeremy Johnson because that time he saw the corner blitz coming off the edge. And a good example of a quarterback that probably thought he wasn't going to play sees this off the edge. He knows right where his answer is. He's got Tony Stevens out there breaking down for him. Good looking drive here by Johnson. Steps up, fires deep, jump ball incomplete. Stevens again. Jordan and it was defended by Thomas Jordan, Thomas the corner. Yeah, he's got a lot of ability, Brent. Jordan Thomas does. He's big at six feet tall. He can run. He's got ball skills. You can see right here, he can high point the football. He's just been too inconsistent this season. Sometimes got lazy with his eyes, was peeking in the backfield, and receivers ran by him for big plays. He's already said he's going to come back and play his senior year. I think that's the right decision, because if he shows more consistency, I think he's a first-round pick. It's a four-down scoreboard, 35-13, 10 to go. And they're going to need it, it looks like. That was Emmanuel Beal from Reynoldsburg, Ohio. You know, the Stoops brothers, being from Youngstown, they jump up in there into Ohio. So does brother Mark, who coaches Kentucky. This defense, this defense for Oklahoma, they, they just seem chippy and they seem motivated. They were supposed to get bullied. Everyone in this game talked about big boy football in Auburn running it down their throats. I think they took that as a personal challenge. They're playing very physical up front tonight. 35-13. Johnson in for the fourth down, not Petway. There's the Wildcat to the 30-yard line and a penalty flag afterwards. Personal foul, base man, defense number 92. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. Matt Romar, one of the nose men, he and Jordan Wade. Hold down the fort. Hard to move those rascals. Take a look at Romar here, number 92. Yeah, he gets that left hand up, Bless right you. on the face mask of carry on Johnson. Good call. I'll tell you, when they needed a drive, they've now gotten it. And you're right, Brent. Jeremy Johnson has sparked this offense. Here they are down in the red zone. Haven't been there since the first drive of the game. Down on the 15 yard line. Very nice. Back to the 19. Hobo. Coming up with that great play back there. He's having two stellar games here late this season. Talked about how good he was against Oklahoma State tonight. He's affected these quarterbacks with his pass rush and now making plays behind the line of scrimmage. 
Wade is in as the nose man on this second down and 12. Johnson in zone, Def intercepted, picked off by Jordan Thomas, Jesse, who you just talked about. Yeah, there's the ball skills I'm talking about that you just can't coach. He does a great job following the receiver up the boundary, then turns around and gets his eyes located on Jeremy Johnson. Step number one. Step number two is making a terrifically difficult catch up in the air. What else can you say about this Oklahoma Sooner defense here tonight? Dominating. First night, the young man from Klein, Texas. Yeah, first team all conference pick, and he shows you why here. Jordan Thomas, they were trying to work a double move against him with Tony Stevens. Did a great job staying home, picking that off. This defense, and the way they've stopped the run, the way they've gotten pressure on Auburn's quarterbacks, all three of them tonight, the way they played on the back end, you can't ask for anything more. P. Ryan is. 30 yards short of Billy Sims' record. They're aware, and he's in now. He's got 53 yards, came into the game to pass the great Billy Sims. Man, one of the best I was ever around. First down and 10. Here he comes, break a big one. Oh, he gave up some. That was Holland making a play, a good play there for the, uh, the defense for Auburn, you know. It's it's tough just when the offense just can't respond to these touchdowns. You know, they've I've said that opening drive, Auburn's had to settle for two field goals. Right now, Oklahoma has completely changed their tempo on offense. Remember, they're an offense that likes to go fast early in games, but now they've got this three possession lead, so they're taking their foot off the gas. Look at Baker Mayfield. He's calm, he's got everybody lined up. They're gonna bleed this play clock down inside five seconds. Mayfield. He'll be back next year in Norman. Westbrook, of course, will be uh, moving on. Give me, give me your read, just from your experience in the NFL, about number 11 at the next level. Well, I really like him. Now, he doesn't have ideal size to be an outside wide receiver at six feet, 175 pounds. The cornerbacks in the NFL are extremely physical. But with his, his athleticism and quickness, I could easily see him moving in the slot, a lot similar to what Sterling Shepard did this year for the New York Giants. He was the go-to guy in Oklahoma, obviously, last year. And with Westbrook's ability, especially in the return game, he provides so much value to somebody who's going to be lucky enough to draft him. And on the other side, I don't want to overlook Carl Lawson, big number 55. We'll be leaving, I'm sure. And there is Westbrook on cue making that. Davis with the stop. And uh, He's so many creative things that you can do with him. Uh, he can also be a return man. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that's what I talked about with that value and, and what he gives you. But he, he's got speed and he's got quickness and suddenness that you simply can't coach. Carl Lawson, a great season, finally healthy this year, too. Yeah. And with his suddenness and his pass rushing ability, these are two players here that yeah. are going to make some team on Sundays very, very happy next year. When you were a youngin', we were just growing up. They used to have huge, massive defensive ends in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Now I see so many speed rushers like Lawson with that great first step. Here's P. Ryan now. That is some good looking football players on this field here today, I'm telling you. Jets, even though they lost, congratulations to both teams in the Rose Bowl. USC, Clay Helton, they hung in. They were behind a couple of touchdowns when I looked over at the monitor. Probably the bowl game of the of, oh, of, no of bowl season. Oh, right? there's no question. That was awesome. And then a field goal win for the Trojans. But also, congratulations to Penn State. Yeah. Did a great job out there. Their first two passes were interceptions. Mm. Second down and six. <laughs> Here I He's starting to close in on it. More of that misdirection with the double pullers. That time it was the left guard and the fullback, Dimitri Flowers, paving the way, and Auburn just crashing in too close. Great blocking outside there by D.D. Westbrook as well in the perimeter. If you're ever going to have success running outside, you've got to have receivers doing their jobs. And oftentimes, 
You know, receivers love to be prima donnas. They like to only catch the football and score touchdowns, not D.D. Westbrook. He's a total player, total package. Seventy one yards, fifteen carries for P. Ryan. I'm going to give him steady diet. Steps to the outside. First down to the thirty yard line. And P. Ryan is going to get that record. There it is. Passes the great Billy Sims. And yes, I was told by Oklahoma this particular record does include the bowl yardage that uh, Billy gained. And so there you are. The crowd is being notified now. Very popular guy with his teammates. In fact, one thing that we see about this Oklahoma team, they are very together. You can see them practice. You can see when they came on the field in a pregame, these guys like each other. Took a lot of pride in it too, trying to get him that record here tonight. That was important to this offensive line, this coaching staff, and obviously to Samaj Piran. This will make Stoopsy seven and four against the SEC. Remember three years ago, 45-31 over now, Alabama. Well, they're now six and two if they win this game in Sugar Bowl. This is a place that they love to come and play. Been here more than any other team. Currently not in the SEC. I, do I hear some of the OU fans mocking <laughs> our conference? Jesse, can you tell them they can't do that? That's the SEC. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. It's been 60 years since I came up here to watch football. I've seen a hurricane that rocks and a tide that rolls. I've seen hustle, perseverance, and heart. I've seen a bowl of cotton that's anything but soft. Some call it hard work, determination, or grit. I call it blimp worthy. Sideline, Lincoln Riley, the offensive coordinator. Someday will get a head coaching job. He's a walk on at Texas Tech. <laughs> My buddy Mike Leach said to him, ah, you're not going to play. You just come and study how we coach. You stand on that side of help me out. And lo and behold, at the age of 25, after Mike was dismissed by the Red Raiders, it was Lincoln Riley calling plays, all right, for the first time ever. And the Red Raiders beat Michigan State. And here he is. And just, I know you think the world of him. No, I think he's a fantastic young mind. And I think that's one reason, too, why Bob Stoops has been here 18 years. 18 years he's think been the head that. coach. Yeah. I mean, in a time in college football where you have to win now, the pressure, but it's not just about recruiting good players. It's about hiring the right people on your staff. Right. And a couple of years ago, he made the decision. He wanted to make a change on offense, found a great young mind in Lincoln Riley from East Carolina. Had the same athletic director, the same yeah. president, yeah. President Bourne, athletic director Joe Castiglione. Come on! But think about this. And, and you know what? When you have that sort of consistency, if you're Bob Stoops and your president backs you and the AD backs you, and you have that kind of longevity, things pay off long term. They kind of see the goal, stay the course. He's won 10 Big 12 championships. That's it, more than? That's more than as many home losses that's he right. has. Thank He's 101 and 9 <laughs> at home. He's got more <laughs> conference championships. The next closest program during his time as the head coach at Oklahoma has two. That's how dominant Bob Stoops has been throughout his career. It's unbelievable. P. Ryan checks back in. Number 32, he'll move to the right side. Down at the 40. Let's go down below to Kaylee. Well, Brent, Oklahoma didn't look to their opponent for bulletin board material for this game. They looked to the media. These players on Oklahoma's team will tell you they've heard the media talk about how the Big 12 is not a physical conference. Dimitri Flowers says they take that personally. Every time somebody talks bad about you beat in football or life, you're going to take it personally. And as soon as this team found out they were coming to the Sugar Bowl, Bob Stoops pulled up clips from the 2013 Sugar Bowl to remind this team how important this game is and what kind of statements can be made when you play a team in the SEC. Yeah, and Kaylee, I mean, Oklahoma came in here and they bullied the bully. I mean, they were supposed to get the football run all over them. They weren't supposed to be able to run the football. 
against one of the best run defenses in the country, and they were able to do both of those things. Give Bob Stoops and his coaching staff a ton of credit. Great job motivating this squad. I'll tell you, coming up next year, they're going to be looking at their 11th conference championship and maybe a trip back to the playoff when you consider what they have coming back. Nothing more important than getting Baker Mayfield back, but P. Ryan and Mixon have decisions to make at running back. They've got a lot exactly. of linemen coming back. Defense needs to be more consistent throughout the course of the year, but they're going to be loaded with talent. So they will punt it away here. In complete control, Roberts is back deep. Takes a roll and he seals him up inside the 10 yard line. We'll take a break. 2.30 to go. 35 13. The Big 12 headed for a big win. He's just a natural passer of the football. You know, there's a lot of guys out there that have really strong arms. They're good throwers. They can throw through a wall. All Baker Mayfield does is throw completions. He just makes it look so effortless. Jess Auburn's longest gain tonight is only 16 yards. And that came back in the first half by Petway. That's Johnson, the receiver. So Johnson to Johnson. Going back to Mayfield, just the accuracy, all three levels of the field, especially throwing the ball deep. He can throw from all different types of body angles and arm slots. He's good in bad weather. Sooners fans will remember him in a snowstorm against West Virginia, rainstorm against Oklahoma State. Didn't affect him. Kaylee. Well, Brent, back in 2013, when Oklahoma won that Sugar Bowl with Trevor Knight, who's sitting there talking to Baker Mayfield right now. Baker Mayfield was watching that game from San Antonio with friends. He had just left Texas Tech. Nobody at Oklahoma knew he was coming yet. He didn't have the scholarship offer. He watched that game as a fan, saw Trevor Knight do what he did, and still wanted to be a Sooner and compete for that job. And compete he did. And back he will come next year as one of the Heisman Trophy favorites. And, uh, I guess it was not whistled down. It looked uh, like he was down, but uh, kept on running. And that's a powerful run by Kerry on Johnson. And a reminder to stay tuned for the Ford post game show after the game. The, uh, here we go. It's Gatorade time. Look out, Stoopsy. Look at Joe Mixon there. He kind of wants to get involved oh, yeah, real quick. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you got to get behind the red shirts, the freshmen, they, they kind of block for you. Johnson going deep for the home run. And there is their longest play of the game. Slayton, the think, receiver, as Johnson cranks it up. Well, I feel good for Jeremy Johnson. Obviously, you know, we've documented it. His career in college has been a little bit up and down. What a what a throw potentially to end your college career on. Watch this, Bobby. Oh, it's how can you do that 51 yards? And then, oh my goodness, I get drowned on top of it. <laughs> Still upset uh, that they caught the post yeah, on yes, defense. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a defense because you normally turn around and not want to give up this touchdown. Carry on, bangs off his own lineman and is down on that play. That was Robert Left. Number 70 Left, Smith, Golson, Kozan, James. Ugh. It's just fun when you watch teams throughout the course of a season. In college football, they get better or they get worse. Very rarely do they stay the same. Completely different team than the ones that lost to Houston and Ohio State earlier in the year. Second down and 11. And uh, whistled down. Prior to the snap, charge timeout, Oklahoma. So Oklahoma calls a timeout, and uh, Jeff, that's going to give me a little time to ask you again about the game on Monday night. I want to remind everybody January 9th, Monday, you get to the wild card weekend in the NFL, and then uh, look, look, look at Stoops, he gave it to him down there, and uh, we're going to have the uh, the Clemson Alabama and if folks weren't with us early in the first half you give you give Clemson a good chance to win this game. big news today in college football Lane Kiffin's not going to be calling plays for Alabama as their offensive coordinator it's going to be Steve Sarkeesian and I think that's an advantage for Clemson I think Steve Sarkeesian's an outstanding offensive mind certainly familiar with the playbook 
and the players that they have on offense. But Lane Kiffin, play callers have a rhythm and an ebb and a flow. Lane Kiffin, I thought, was so good over the last three years. Just because you're calling plays from the same playbook with the same players doesn't necessarily guarantee the same success. You, you don't mind if I beg to differ. Do you? No, no, no. That's why you're here. Did you see any kind of a rhythm? Well, in that their last game, game no. Washington? But over the last three years, and what Lane Kiffin's done as a quarterback oh, whisper oh, with oh, a brand new starting quarterback oh, each year to the playoffs, he's before, got a week. He's got a week. Coach he's got a week to get ready for Sarkeesian. one of the best defenses in all of college football. He gave Sarkeesian a second chance, a lifeline. You know who he had to talk to? A fellow by the name of Pete Carroll. Johnson on the move. Incomplete. Let me tell you, I was around UFC a lot. Yep. Sarkeesian yep. and Lane. Yep. Let me tell you right now, Sarkeesian knew more about that offense when he was at USC. But he had an entire offseason, not nine days to get ready for Clemson I, and get ready for Nick Saban in your ear in your headset. But listen, I love Lane, but he's got another job. He needs to move on to yep. do that. And they need a full-time assistant to call play. You I and I disagree with I you. First well, time we've disagreed. I think it was the here, right buddy. move by Saban. Here we go. Back down our get this tucked high and complete. The stove is the intended receiver. Man, I can't believe you disagree with Well, uh, for Auburn, you know, they're, they're going to spin ahead and look towards 2017. Gus Malzahn told us yesterday he thinks next year could be the most talented team he's had since he's been there. Jared Stedham. Transfer from ah, Baylor. Yes. He's Stidham. coming in to compete for the quarterback spot, and he's a pretty talented guy. That'll be interesting to watch, but you get out a different dimension of this offense. Well, here's your last down for Auburn. Last chance. No, check it. That's a first and goal with Craig Myers. He's missing in action this year. One of the most ballyhooed recruits, and uh, Gus wants to get the touchdown, and uh, the crowd at Oklahoma is going to boo him. But uh, but I understand this. Yeah, I do too. To get a touchdown. You know, we're talking about the, their team next year at Auburn, and whoever wins that quarterback derby, whether it's Sean White, whether it's J Jared Stidham, John Franklin, whoever it is, they're getting the keys to a pretty shiny car. When you consider Carryon Johnson, Cam Petway coming back at running back, and you just mentioned Nate Craig Myers, they've got four really good young freshman wide receivers. They're going to have a lot of skill on offense, and that defense under what will be second-year defensive coordinator Kevin Steele should continue playing at a high level. It'll be interesting to see. I'll tell you this, I know this. The Auburn Tigers will not be picked to finish sixth in their division like they were this year. Here is Stidham now. He was at Baylor, and he played 10 games left of after the Art Bryles situation developed. And uh, there's something about Stidham. Just listen to this. Against Kansas State, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State, he was 51 of 81. This is different than this. You're looking at some other stats up there. 51 of 81 in three consecutive games for 934 yards, six touchdowns. Two. He was at practice last week in Auburn, and what we told by the coaches, a lot of the receivers hung around. They liked running patterns with him. So here we go. Wildcat. Johnson keeps it straight ahead. Stopped by the middle of that defense. Mono, mono. Wow. Trying to get a timeout with two seconds. Whoa. Gus Malzahn and Red Lashley are not going to go away quietly in the night to the chagrin of Oklahoma fans. Well, and give Oklahoma defensively a lot of credit because they're not quitting. They've got a lot of backups out there in the front seven on the field. They're still fighting hard. This is a defense last half of the season gained so much more confidence. Played their best football during the toughest stretch when they played against Baylor, West Virginia, and Oklahoma State. Kind of putting a punctuation mark here at the end of the season. Bob Stoops wants this too. He's getting his guys hyped up. Get this stop. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yes, indeed. We're going to go back to the Wildcat with Johnson again. Blitz from the edge. Jump pass. Touchdown. Jalen Harris, sophomore from Montgomery. So they score on their first drive of the game and their last play of the game. Touchdowns. Game is over without an extra point. That's good game, man.
Very friendly handshake out there. Yeah, I think Stoops was okay with it. Why not? Let your kids try to get a touchdown at the end of the game. None of the funny math was affected by that touchdown, folks, just so everybody knows. And uh, Coach Stoops is with Kaylee, so let's go down below. Coach, the Sugar Bowl has been good to you. How do you describe the significance of this one? Uh, just really special. I'm proud of my players. They did an awesome job really leading up to this. Uh, worked hard and we're ready for the game. Assistant coaches did a great job, so uh, it's pleasing. Uh, and then Auburn's a good team. Uh, compliments to them for a really good year. After that one and two start, what led this team to reeling off 10 straight wins after that? You know, we kept our confidence. You know, when everyone doubts you, we kept we kept believing in our system, what we do, uh, kept our confidence and kept positive. And, and we worked and, and improved every week. And here we are. So uh, proud of our guys. You've known some good offenses. Where does this one rank among them? It's right up there with some of the great ones we've had. We've been fortunate to have a few good years where we've really had some special players, and this guy's as special as they come right here. Love you, Baker. Good job, Baker. Thank you, Coach. Baker, you have put together one of the most efficient seasons in the history of college football. How do you explain what led you to do that? We've got great coaches, uh, great players surrounding me. They, they make my job easy, you know. I just come out here and all I have to do is do my job and, and the rest is history and you know they do it well for me. The last time OU won the Sugar Bowl you were watching as a fan yeah. and you came here inviting the competition. How do you describe what this means to you to be able to now celebrate a win of your own in the Sugar Bowl. You know it, it feels great. It's, it's not even settled in yet but uh, it's so much fun to be here. I mean the way we started really makes this whole season so so sweet. Uh, you know we, we worked hard and then. It'll settle in here in a second that we just won the Sugar Bowl, but it's been a lot of work, and, and you know I'm really thankful for the teammates that are around me and my coaches. But uh, you know, just just really happy right now. After that one and two start, how do you explain what led you all to ten straight wins after it? You know, we had a players-only meeting after the Ohio State game. Uh, said that we weren't going to let the season slip away. Uh, just made made a lot of promises to each other, uh, to our fans and the coaches that we weren't going to let up. We weren't going to ever quit on them. And so, you know, ever since then, it's been one week at a time, and we've taken care of business. Congratulations to you, Baker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So there you have it. Oklahoma, champions of the Big 12, 35. Auburn of the SEC 19 so congratulations to the Sooners and all of their wonderful fans the All-State Sugar Bowl champions stay tuned now for the Ford postgame show we'll have all the festivities right after these messages <laughs> 